What's going on guys, John the Video Guy here. Welcome back to my channel, hope you're having a great day. In today's video, I'm gonna be going over what is the best iMac to buy for video editing. So there's a lot of different iMacs, a lot of different computers out there, but in this video, I'm gonna be going over all the specs such as the RAM, processor, graphics card, all the other cool things when it comes to an Apple computer, 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 when it comes to video editing. So be sure to stick to the very end because I'm gonna go over all these specs and they're all important when it comes to video editing and the performance that you it come to expect from an Apple computer for video editing. Now I won't be going over PC builds, but I did actually make another video if you're interested in actually buying separate you know, components such as the CPU, RAM, and the different parts when it comes to building a computer. I'll link that video up here when it comes to my recommendations of the actual parts to buy and build your own PC. But in this video, it's just gonna be Apple. So feel free to look at that if you're looking in that direction and stay here if you're on Team Apple. So without further ado, hit that like button if you're new to the channel. Consider subscribing if you like these videos and let's dive into it. First, we'll go to Apple's website and I'll show you where to navigate to buy a Mac. So go to the Mac tab. Go to iMac, say hello, and click buy. It's interesting, the newer ones that you probably wouldn't want to buy for video editing come in different colors now, which is interesting. I honestly am not a fan of them, but you know, if you wanted to get that branding on, you can make it red and whatnot. But once you're here, scroll all the way down, and you'll actually see an option looking for 27 or 21 and a half inch, and you'll want to click shop now there and then you'll want to be on the 27 inch and then you'll choose this guy the highest quality and then we'll start going through the different specs so you have a few different options and you know when it comes to imax each component is expensive and worth considering you know doing a lot of research about so i highly recommend not only watching this video but also hearing from other mac users as well i have an imac um, for my professional job as a video editor. Um, and it's gonna be similar to the iMac that I'm building right here today and showing you, but probably a little bit more beefier. So let's start with the display. There's standard glass and nano texture glass. And what's interesting is nano glass is pretty cool. I've, I don't have it for my job, but say if you're a video editor and you're on site a lot, maybe you're actually you know converting dailies actually on site of a film crew, or maybe you're in a very unique environment where maybe you're back, back seat at a concert or a rave and you're video editing on site somewhere, or maybe you're on the beach or somewhere crazy where there's a lot of different light luminances happening. Nano glass might be a, uh, an option to consider adding to your iMac to reduce the, the luminance glare when it comes to the changing light environments. But if you're in a typical studio as a video editor in a dark lit environment, you probably don't really need it. So just consider your environment when you're buying an iMac and you know you can make your decision based off that. For me personally, I'm not in a crazy environment. I'm just in an office setting. So I'm gonna choose uh, the normal glass, standard glass. When it comes to processor, both of these are really great. Um, and this is interesting because they're both, they're different speeds, but one has more cores at a lower speed and one has less cores at a higher speed. So when it comes to video editing, higher cores are always better, but there is a certain level where, you know, too many cores is just overkill. Really, you can't go wrong with either of these um, options. If you want to proof, uh, future proof yourself a little bit, maybe 10th generation, 10 core would probably be the way to go i9 over the i7 but the i7 is definitely good uh it's the i believe it's the processor that is the one where i work with that is the processor i have there it's a great processor it's a great imac uh, it's done the job so actually my imac it's actually only four cores it actually does pretty good so you know i, I take it back we'll choose eight core because i honestly think 10 core would be good if you're doing 6K or above video work, I would say. Yeah, I would do eight core for probably normal. But if you're doing more advanced and you want to future-proof your computer a little bit, uh, 10 core would probably be the way to go. If 
you're look if basically if you're on a budget probably choose eight core if you have the money choose 10 core that would be my recommendation here when it comes to memory um, this is another thing where the difference is pretty marginal it's not that different from like 64 to 128 and there's a big price difference as well and it really comes down to what type of video footage you're editing Honestly, if you're just editing 4K footage, I think 64 gigabyte RAM is great. If you're editing something crazy like 8K, 12K footage, then probably 128. And actually, I probably wouldn't even recommend this iMac. I would probably get the iMac Pro or the Tower or something with a lot more power. But for the normal video editor that has a client base that are looking for HD, 4K deliverables, this is kind of the iMac that I would shoot for. Um, something more normal, not really... Uh, over the top here. So what I would choose is probably 64 gigabyte RAM. 32 is good too. If you're on a budget, 32 is fine, but 64 is probably a good base to be at right now in today's age. And if you wanna learn more about RAM, Linus Tech Tips actually put a really great video that I watched recently. I'll link it down in the video description. He goes over the RAM performance of several different computers. He opens Chrome tabs and tests the uh, RAM for each of the com different configurations, and it's really informative. Later on in the video, it goes over video editing and higher you know, performance tasks such as video editing, rendering, 3D stuff. So it's worth watching if you wanna learn more about RAM. So feel free to check that out. When it comes to graphics, honestly, eight gigabytes is pretty solid um, for 4K footage. I would probably do the middle option. But say if you are primarily a DaVinci Resolve uh, editor, I would recommend beefing it up to 16 gigabytes because Resolve ultimately uses the GPU. You wanna have a really strong GPU in that uh, regards. If you're in Final Cut or um, Premiere Pro, you could probably get away with the normal uh, eight gigabyte RAM that I think 16 might be a little overkill. Where Premiere Pro uses both, but a little bit more on the CPU. When it comes to storage, honestly, one terabyte is probably all you need. You'll probably have a separate storage solution when it comes to video editing, such as a NAS or a RAID system, or even probably work off of an SSD external hard drive to actually store your working files. So I only recommend probably getting one SSD storage internally just to hold the applications and the core elements of your computer, you know, such as, you know, the drivers and whatnot and really your project files and your archival system should probably be off uh, somewhere else on a separate probably HDD or a different system such as a RAID or a NAS. Um, and that would be the way I would go. It would, it'll save you a lot of money because eight terabytes worth of SSD is expensive. And if you wanna save money, I wouldn't, I wouldn't buy eight terabytes of SSD. If you wanna learn more about NAS and RAID systems, Sarah Dietschy actually came out with a video a few years ago that really explains the difference. She goes into detail and it's a great watch if you wanna learn more about that. I'll link it down in the video description below. So feel free to go there after you are done here watching my video. All right, so ethernet. Uh, this is really dependent on your internet service and how often you use your internet. I mean, honestly, if you only have like like me, I only have 100 megabytes down, so Ethernet for me probably wouldn't be that good, or the 10 gigabyte Ethernet wouldn't be that good. But for businesses in different areas that have that fiber connection, um, the 10 gigabyte might be something to consider, especially if you're uploading raw video to a service such as Dropbox or some somewhere on the cloud, uh, you can, upgrade to the 10 gigabyte ethernet. It'd be a decent uh, investment to uh, future-proof your computer, especially as internet starts rolling out with new infrastructure down the line as internet speeds increase. For mouse or trackpad, honestly, as a video editor, I don't really like the trackpad that much, so I'll probably just get the mouse. It already comes with the keyboard, so you're good there. Then pre-installed software, Final Cut, no, get Premiere Pro, or Resolve, don't buy Final Cut Pro. Uh, how about this? Comment below if you have Final Cut Pro and I'll give you a like. But honestly, it, I mean, if you are an Apple user, I think it's already connected to your Apple account, so it would come over. This is, I think, only for if you want to buy Final Cut for the first time. So 
If you already have Final Cut, you could probably just transfer it from your old Mac to your new Mac. And there you have it. So that is the purchasing of an iMac. And our grand total here is just under $4,000, 3,700 for a new iMac. Um, and this is what I would get if I was in the market today. So, you know, Apple is expensive, but you get a really nice deal because, you know, you get the warranty with it. If anything happens with the iMac, you can always contact the Apple store and have it repaired for you. Honestly, Apple computers are really good for video editors that don't really want to go that deep in technology. They just want a solid computer that's going to get the job done. And you have a support system with Apple. They're a really great company and they make great computers. So now also there is the MacBook and you could probably save a few hundred dollars if you go and get the 16 inch MacBook. And there are pros and cons with iMacs and MacBooks. I won't get too much into it into this video, but basically I think the biggest thing when it comes to a MacBook and an iMac is the MacBook is a little bit leaner. You can travel with it a lot better. The iMac, trust me, I've traveled with it and it's a pain. So a MacBook is really good to travel with. If you do a lot of traveling, I recommend getting an iMac, or not an iMac, a MacBook. If you do a lot of travel video editing, you're on the road a lot. Um, but you know, there are some cons. It's not as powerful. MacBooks tend to break down a little bit easier than iMacs, you know, just by the nature of them being smaller, everything's more compressed more. iMacs are kind of more durable. They have a little bit more beef when it comes to ed editing and rendering power. So it's something to consider. There's pros and cons to both. So so that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you want more content, feel free to head over to johnthevideoguide.com where I have a blog where I post once a month. There's also a podcast that I'm a part of called The Post Show where I talk to other video editors in the industry and get insights from them. You can also check out my other playlists if you're interested in Premiere Pro, After Effects cameras and different audio and music tutorials. Feel free to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you like these videos, and we'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching.